Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. South African diamond mining company De Beers Consolidated Mines has sold its Kimberley mines to a consortium made up of Ikapa Mining and London-listed Petro Diamonds. Martin Kremer joins us in studio to discuss this development. Hi Martin. Hi Tracy. Could you discuss the timing of this 102 million rand acquisition and what it entails? Yes, so it's been on the card since May. You know, you get a, a big company like De Beers, which has certain cutoffs. If they don't get a certain return, then they dispose of their assets. We've seen them do it in many occasions with Cullinan and with Finch and with uh, other assets, the Kimberley Underground. Now these Kimberley mines really are tailings assets uh, and a plant that treats the tailings and can also treat ore. Uh, <coughs> but they decided that the return they would get from that from 2018 would not meet their hurdle rates. So I think they were very responsible in that they were proactive. So here we are in you know, 2015 going into 2016, they've already found new buyers who have already paid the cash uh, and um, you know, are ready to take over provided the, the regulatory hurdles are scaled. I mean, they've still got to go through the competitions authority Hopefully that will be done in the first quarter of next year. They've got to get through Section 11 of the um, legislation affecting transfer of ownership of mines. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. We've seen a lot of those take long. So, it, you know, from the private sector point of view, they've moved fast. It's now up to the government to move fast so that um, the new owners can get in there and move because they've got a fantastic advantage of the rand price of <laughs> diamonds at the moment is sky high. And, you know, we know that the actual dollar price of diamonds uh, is, is not as good as it should be. And there are calls for people to, to lower that. In other words, there's pressure on the beers by the people who beneficiate those diamonds, who cut and polish. They want a lower dollar price. But with these guys coming in, they've set a $95 a carat hurdle. Uh, and um, that has been conservative in itself. But when you multiply that by 14 you know, 14 times four, you know, you get quite a nice uh, um, rand price. So the timing is quite good. They're all prepared to get moving on this because they've got a lot of experience. And um, I think that uh, it is responsible of the beers as a big company to make sure that, uh, you know, the smaller junior hits the ground running. And Kimberley is quite a historical area for De Beers. Um, how is this going to impact its other operations in the area? Yeah, well, you know, they've got that site holder building. You know, I've been up to it. It's a beautiful uh, edifice. It looks over Kimberley and uh, a lot of high technology going on in that. They keep all that. So they'll do th the various sorting activities still. They will still look after the big whole museum, which is a tourist attraction. And they want to make sure that when they leave this last set of assets uh, from a mining point of view, there is the greatest sustainability you can have. And, and um, that's why they want these lower cost operators to get in early so that they will still be having a good margin of profit from 2018 and the license goes to 2040. So that's quite a nice horizon that uh, this group of uh, um, companies at Carpa and, and Petra uh, have to, to, to um, bring into their portfolio. And there was great interest in Kimberley Mines from other potential investors. Why did De Beers decide on the Ikapa Petro Diamonds Consortium? Yeah, it was, it was very good. I think uh, a lot of the 70 other bidders uh, you know, have said, well, you know, why did you give it to Ikapa and Petra? What about us? And uh, uh, you know, the price that you're giving them uh, looks on the low side to us and we could have given you more. Well, there were many other boxes that, that were, uh, were being ticked by De Beers and at no stage when they invited bids, you know, uh, in May, did they say that price would be the criterion. Uh, they had the idea of, you know, job preservation uh, as number one and there are about 625 jobs, 650 jobs if you take the direct jobs plus you know, the contractor jobs. And then, of course, there's the spin-off. And that is the second phase. They're looking at Kimberley, you know, getting an economic spurt through this. And, and, and this uh, momentum, staying in Kimberley, that was a big thing for them. And the social consciousness of the company also came into uh, ticker box. And, and that's why, you know, Copper, which has been active in the area as uh, a recoverer of diamonds from dumps, 
uh, for a quarter century. So they built up, you know, quite a lot of experience from other dumps that they have been acquired from the beers. The beers have seen them working, seen their commitment, you know, to the area, seen uh, the attitude, and coming in now with Petra gives them that extra spurt because of the fact that although they'll be in control with 50.1% and uh, Petra with 49.9, there are two uh, highly experienced there with uh, companies with Petra doing the underground and there's therefore opportunity to unlock some synergies between the two and to make use and leverage off their two sets of personnel who are experienced. And talking about job preservation, what or how is at the consortium going to run the business going forward? Yeah, well, they, you know, their, their consciousness around Kimberley, the um, link to Kimberley is very strong. The staff of um, the uh, uh, Kimberley Mines, uh, especially the National Union of Mine Workers, was originally hostile to this whole idea. They were accusing De Beers of not really doing the proper due diligence and they could have carried on if they wanted to from 2018. And why give this over to, to new people? And they put out a statement uh, in July saying, we are diametrically opposed to this. But you know the reports coming back after the announcement of a carper taking over yesterday and a carper actually presenting to the staff, they you know got a round of applause apparently from you know these uh, 350 direct employees and contractors, which make up another 300, to this idea of them taking control of uh, you know these um, historic 127-year-old mines that you know were around the whole start of mining in this part of the world, well, in the Northern Cape, and then followed up with gold mining. And, th th and that was the whole reason why a lot of us are, are here, because we got attracted through these mining activities. And um, they have now given that legs. It can go through to 2040, 2050. You know, perhaps there will be new activities, uh, perhaps there'll be new techniques that can actually extend the life. So. I think that um, there are smiles all around, it seems, even though probably De Beers is going to admit they, they didn't get th the greatest price. But it's nice to have been paid in cash quickly by these two entities. And it's good for a carper, you know, which is really historically disadvantaged, South African heavy, um, to be able to just take that cash quickly and, and put it in and say, well, you know, we're ready to move on this provided we can scale the competition authority hurdles and the uh, Department of Mineral Resources uh, transfers. Um, uh, you know, we're ready to, to, to actually generate quite a few rands out of this because they will also be responsible for, for s marketing the diamonds. So how they're going to do that it could be by tender. There are a lot of, um, instant, well, there, there, there's an infrastructure in Kimberley where, you know, you can market because it's such a long-standing diamond area and they're looking forward to those returns in rands at the moment obviously you would like the dollar price of, of uh, diamonds to go up at some stage which i'm sure it should do uh, in the meantime you've got this marvelous bonanza from from the weak rand that does have implications because they are going to buy new equipment at some stage if they import that new equipment, you know, they're going to have to pay more because the rand is weak. So it's not all a plus. And, but in, 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 in this period, in the diamond business, I think they're in a sweet spot. Thanks, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Tracy. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the South African mining industry.